Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, uh, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, including emerging topics such as soil health, plant genetics, vertical farming, and aquaculture, to name a few. This month's theme is the agri-food supply chain, and on today's call, we're joined by Felix Chung, CEO of Ixon Food Technology. Ixon's advanced sous vide aseptic packaging technology, ASAP for short, sterilizes food at just 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which allows the food to maintain both its flavor and moisture while fully protecting it up to 24 months. This process also excludes preservatives and chemicals, which are commonly found in other preserved or packaged foods. ASAP retains the quality and nutritional value of fresh produce with the convenience and accessibility of canned and preserved foods. Now, each of you knows that customers and our companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Ixon's market. You are potential customers for Ixon's products and services. You have built a company similar to Ixon, or you are a sophisticated business person or agricultural professional who understands the market and challenges and opportunities Ixon may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Now, a few process comments before, before we jump in here. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help Ixon Food Technology find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships to help them grow their business. You are all on mute. You can use the chat window to ask a question at any time. This presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. And so without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Felix Chung, CEO of Ixon Food Technology. Felix, please feel free to take it away. Thank you so much, David. It is a great pleasure uh, to be speaking here. And uh, so, I, and I can declare this is, prop, this is the most, the latest presentation I have ever given, given that I'm based in Hong Kong and it's 4 a.m. over on this side. So our company is based in Hong Kong. Give, I'll give you a little bit background about um, myself. So I'm a food scientist. I have a PhD degree in physics and also a master's degree in food analysis and food safety management. And in fact, this is how our technology come to life because um, like I met my business partner, Elton, when I was studying my master's degree uh, at Hong Kong Baptist University. There we developed this amazing technology called advanced sous vide aseptic packaging that allows us to store fresh meats, fish, seafood at room temperature, and in fact, we are the only company in the world that can keep fresh meats fresh at room temperature for two years. And one of our goal is um, to become the next Tetra Pak. So if you know about the, the Swedish company Tetra Pak, they're the leader in the aseptic packaging solutions for liquids like milk, juice, any kind of beverages. And we are the first company in the world that can do aseptic packaging for solid food like um, meat, fish, and seafood. So uh, our talk today is about food supply chain. And we probably all know that like the food supply chain is faced with a host of problems these are uh, today. First is food safety. So uh, especially in the meat industry, after you produce, uh, you, you produce the meat products, how can we ensure that everything is clean, free from bacteria, viruses, parasites, especially with the consumers nowadays being so concerned about like microorganisms uh, during the, the COVID pandemic. And then the rising costs, like meats, especially high quality meats is getting more and more expensive, not only because of the rising cost of the raw material, but because of the demand in the cold chain supply so how can we actually reduce the costs? And then third, we probably are all, are all accustomed to this problem now, uh, the border disruptions. If the meats, they, uh, they get disrupted, uh, disturbed during the transportation, like that leads to problem like uh, a shelf life, spoilage. Can we extend the shelf life of meats from days to weeks? In, and in our case, like two years without using preservatives, is that possible? Sustainability. Consumers these days, 
have the perceived uh, the perception that eating meat is very unsustainable. So is there a way where we can allow consumers to continue their meat diet, but remain sustainable at the same time? And lastly, data, uh, insightful data. So in the meat industry these days, it is actually very difficult to capture the consumer's data, especially uh, the, the end consumers. Is it possible to set up a system where we get to analyze, uh, collect the data, analyze the, the uh, consumer data, and give consumers exactly what they want, the, the meat product that they want? And it would be great if we have a one grand solution that can solve all these problems. Well, luckily, today here we have this new technology called advanced sous vide aseptic packaging that allows us to store meat at room temperature. The, the way we actually hear some products, we, we actually have a pilot factory in Hong Kong where we make this product. So this is a US sirloin steak in a box, and this is a Canadian pork chop in a box. In fact, they have actually been sitting on my desk for the last four months and without a refrigeration. If you open it, this is what it looks like. The sirloin steak in extra virgin olive oil, no chemicals or preservatives. And I don't know if you can actually see it. There's some, you can actually see some of the myoglobin, what, what no, uh, some people call it as blood floating around. And it can remain shelf stable because our technology actually sterilized the, the meat so that there's no bacteria. And without bacteria, there'll be no spoilage. And this is the Canadian pork chop. So it's a lightly cooked meat because it's been sous vide at 60 degrees. And because we have sterilized the product, no, there'll be no spoilage. And unlike traditional retort product, the taste uh, of our product and the texture is, is unprecedented. It, it's a uh, tender, juicy, medium rare. If you cut open the meats right now, you can actually see the inside is still pink. And the best thing about it is because it's sterilized, there is no bacteria, viruses, or, uh, or, or parasites. So even if the pork is slightly medium rare, you don't have to worry about like getting tapeworms, things like that. So how do we achieve such low temperature sterilization? Why hasn't anyone been able to achieve uh, the, the same results as, as we did? Well, if you look at the conventional uh, 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 way of sterilizing uh, sterilization uh, food, we use retort sterilization. And the way we do it is we put the whole packet of food into a retort oven, and then we heat the food to 121 degrees Celsius for around 40 minutes. The high heat is what kills all the bacteria and allows us to store canned food without refrigeration. But the, 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 the side effect of this uh, method is that the high heat will overcook the meat, making the meat very tough and dry. We realized very early on that there's a smarter way of sterilization as uh, sterilizing food, a way to circumvent the overheating problem. In any packaged food, there are three components. The packaging, the solid components, which in this case is the meat, and there's also the liquid component, which in this case is the oil, but it can be marinades like teriyaki sauce, tomato sauce, things like this. We actually separate the different components into, and then apply different sterilization techniques on the different components. So for example, for the packaging, <clears throat> We use vaporized hydrogen peroxide, a chemical method that will kill all bacteria and, and uh, microorganisms. And the great thing about vaporized hydrogen peroxide is after it evaporates, it becomes water. So there's no residue. For the liquid, if it's oil, it's very simple. We heat the liquid components to 160 degrees Celsius or about seven to eight minutes. That is the high heat is sufficient to kill all bacteria and, and viruses. And finally, the solid components. This is the part that not many people know. For whole muscle cut meats, the interior is actually sterile. 
So all we need to do is actually sterilize the outside. So we have a surface sterilization technique that raises the exterior temperature to 160 degrees for 30 to 60 seconds. So after sterilization, given the solid is sterile, the liquid is sterile and the packaging is sterile, all we have to do is combine everything together under an aseptic environment, which means that the environment also is free from bacteria, then everything is sterile. We just perform the final step of the sous vide to cook through the meats to deactivate enzymes so that the meats will not break down. And then you have a 100% shelf stable product that has amazing texture. <clears throat> so what are some of the benefits of this technology? So number one, we reduce food wastage. So if you look at the, the current food industry, we waste about like 20% of 25% uh, of the meat and 40% of the fish and seafood gets wasted before they have a chance to reach the hands of the consumers. And that's like 100 million tons of food worth 300 billion US dollars that could have been used to feed 2.3 billion people. Imagine if there's a way to actually preserve these products. We actually have enough to feed people living on earth in 2050. And this is going to be a huge business. And the second thing is we eliminate the cold chain. At the moment, meat is uh, distributed worldwide using cold chain, which is an, ex an extremely energy intensive um, process. Also, it's subjected, prone to problems like border disruptions and spoilage. So if we can eliminate the cold chain, we actually can save a lot of energy. In fact, and, and also cost. In fact, you know, given that the global cold chain is uh, for food is valued at $200 billion, if we can save 80% of the energy and ship at one eighth of the cost by eliminating cold chain, we actually have, some, have a market of $160 billion. And also, like with this enabling technology, ASAP, for the first time in history, we have a way to ship meat directly from the site of production to the consumers. And this can help cut a lot of costs, not only because you are shipping at room temperature, but because you're cutting out a lot of the middlemen, the distributors, the vendors, the retailers, and because you don't have food spoilage, you don't have to transfer the, that cost to the consumers. To give you some example, like at the moment in US, prime sirloin steak costs about $10 per pound in Costco. In Hong Kong, the same steak would cost about 22 US dollar per pound. So like more than twice as expensive which is understandable because of the logistics, the retailer cost, the shelf space costs, and also the wastage costs. Imagine if we can ship directly from US to Hong Kong to the consumers. We can offer the cost customer a high quality product at a faster pace and also at a cheaper cost. And food service. Some of the problems that they're facing now is the, the, the the difficulty of actually getting professional chefs, people working in the food service industry, and also of the rising cost of experienced chef. Here, you have a product that is precisely cooked in, this, in a central factory. And you, once you open the package, you only need 30 seconds to cook it. So imagine how fast, how much, how much quicker we accelerate the food service industry. And there will be no complaints from the customers because it's basically impossible to have an overcooked meat because everything is precisely cooked. And uh, like the, the applications is endless. Things that you can do now, but you couldn't do before. So for example, you can take our meats on a camping trip to space, to high mountains, and uh, to like to the middle of, the of a desert. In fact, like, with this technology, we, prop we can distribute meat 
to corners of the world where we couldn't reach because of poor cold chain infrastructure. So the applications are endless. So other things we can do is like, for example, we can put it into instant noodles. So instead of uh, freeze dried uh, ingredients, now you have a piece of juicy tender steak or pork chops to go with the instant noodles. Gift sets. So for example, you can pair it with wine so that you know the more wine you drink, the more meat you eat. And the more meat you eat, the more wine you drink. And men supermarkets where now selling fresh produce like meat is actually impossible. But with this technology, now you, you suddenly can start selling meats in an unmanned supermarket. So we have a facility, a pilot factory in Hong Kong, where we can make about 50 kilograms of products per day. Our next goal is to build a, uh, we're actually building a facility in US this year, where the production capacity will be increased to one ton of meat per day. And we estimate that the technology will cost around two US dollars per pound of meat process. The, the goal is actually to in further increase this production capacity to four tons of meat per day so that the cost of the technology will actually be competitive with the current uh, packaging technology like vacuum sealing technology. And over the last 15, 15 months, we have um, launched a Kickstarter campaign where we offer 2,000 pieces of our products to the worldwide and raised 40,000 US dollars in 12 hours, we have joined five accelerators program and worked with 22 corporate partners around the world, including Ecolab, Mitsui Chemicals, Sealed Air, and also won multiple awards. So it's been a pleasure to give you this presentation and I hope that you see the benefits of this technology and I'm ready to accept any questions. Well, Felix, thanks so much for such a fantastic presentation. And I, I can speak here as someone who has tried the product, and it, I, I will say it really certainly exceeded expectations. I think, it, and this was sort of ties into one of my initial questions for you. But I think you know, shelf life preservation is such an interesting challenge because everybody wants it, but the word preservation or preservatives also kinds of kind of freaks out the average consumer. But having tried the product, it was phenomenal. So anybody who is also interested in trying products like this, I totally recommend it. It's pretty, it was pretty mind. -blowing. So with like, with that in mind, like Felix thinking about that sort of dual challenge where supermarkets want it, consumers want it, people want things that last longer. And then there's certain types of products where we've been able to see that like milk lasts so much longer than it used to in the past. But like for things like this, where there's been some pre-processing that, you know, creates, it's fundamentally a new type of, of preserving foods, what does consumer response look like, and how do you think about sort of navigating that sort of that the challenge of of this sort of dual message? Yeah, we've actually done like consumer testing, preliminary consumer testing, where we tested our products and also asked our uh, participants their willingness to buy our products at the beginning of the trial after three minutes of uh, explanation of the technology and then finally trying the product. And at the beginning of the trial, we scored five out of 10, which is expected. And like you said, you know, because it's of this preservation concept. And then after the science explanation, six out of 10. But then we saw that after they tried the product just once, they tried sirloin steak, pork chops, the score went uh, from six out of 10 to 9.5 out of 10. And that uh, convinced us that we only needed the consumers to try our product once, and then they, they will be converted. I'm not saying that there's no challenge. There's definitely hurdle. There's uh, marketing to be done, education to be done. But the, I think we're very lucky that here we have a product where there is no compromise in taste and texture. And so, we only need to get the consumers to try once and hopefully by the words, words of mouth, people will start realizing the benefits of this technology and how it tastes great, much better, even better than chilled food. And it's so convenient that everyone will adapt this technology. So with, so with that in mind, 
and given that you've gotten obviously some some direct to consumer interest through the crowdfunding platform uh, and effort, how do you think through sort of the go to market and who's going to be the early adopters for a product like this? Who is most likely going to say, "I have been screaming for some for a meat product that doesn't need to be refrigerated and can last longer, and I need that now"? Like who who's in that category? That's a very good question. So, like I said in the presentation, we are building a, a factory in US. Now, the reason for that is we are trying to get close to the source of the raw material. Now, after we package the product, we are selling this product worldwide, but we are aiming for a target market in Asia. The reason being, we, we, we predict that, you know, in order to convince the American consumers to use our products and not use the, the, the markup at the chilled and frozen meat product, it might it might take some time because they are comparatively of the same price. But if we are shipping this product to Asia Pacific without cold chain and directly, we can offer consumers uh, in the Asia a uh, cheaper product, but of the same quality. This becomes a very convincing proposition where they are willing to try the, uh, the product and give it a go. So we are aiming for Asia Pacific. And if this technology take off, we are then going to build uh, similar factories in Australia. You know, they have very good uh, meat products, seafood products, and also like Thailand, which is uh, like the Asians, the, the, the protein center of Asia. Got it. Thanks, Felix. And I just want to pause here. And, you know, if there's any questions from the audience, um, the best way at this time to type those questions in is through that Q&A box. So if you do have a question, please don't, don't hesitate to to, to, to ask a question. And I was just, just on the same, on the same thread, do you, do you imagine that Ixon is going to run both B2C and B2B routes at the, at the onset? Cause I know you've gotten some interest from in some of the major meat companies, but also it's equally viable that you could be selling products directly from an e-commerce perspective. Do you expect to do both? Yes. Actually, at the very beginning, we wanted to focus our business on a B2B model. But then we re realized the benefit of actually running the D2C uh, business model on top of this uh, for, for several reasons. Number one, the, the meat industry is actually quite conservative. It, it might need a lot of effort in order to convince them to switch to our technology. So uh, instead of actually doing this brute force, brute force and going after them one by one, the best way to do it is actually demonstrate the use case and demonstrate the demand. And that's why we're building this D2C model. And secondly, actually the, the D2C model, it's, it's, it's a good case to demonstrate how an enabling technology such as ASAP can create a completely revolutionary business model that is going to change the, the, the meat industry, the, the, the consumer's world. And, and finally, this will shorten our, our time needed to generate revenue. So for a lot of the reasons, we are running the D2C model like a marketing tool to drive our B2B licensing model underneath. Got it. Thanks, Felix. Well, I'll pause here just one more moment in case there's any other questions. But otherwise, Felix, what, what can the audience do to help you out here? What do you guys need the most help, advisors, customers, intros, et cetera? And how can they, how can they reach you? Oh, sure. So, you know, this talk is about uh, food supply chain. And in fact, this technology, if we can leverage the, uh, this new D2C business model, like I, I can see that a lot of the role players in this supply chain can, can leverage this technology, this opportun business opportunity. So we are looking for meat processes, food packaging, equipment suppliers, as well as material suppliers, supermarket chains, and also food service like operators who would like to benefit and leverage this technology and work together because we are the technology provider and we would love to have people who can help us demonstrate the use case and also help us realize this technology. Fantastic. Well, Felix, thank you so much for joining us today. Congratulations on all the progress to date. 
I'd also like to thank the audience for their active participation today. For anybody who's new to these calls, we host these every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. You can register for AgriFood Conversations as a webinar series by going to agrifoodconversations.com. And if you know anybody who'd like to listen to this webinar, please feel free to share it with them directly. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. And they can either register through that or through agrifoodconversations.com. Otherwise, Felix, thank you again so much. Again, great products. Encourage anybody to try who's interested. And thanks, everyone, for joining today. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, everyone.